Alright, y'all. It's me here. I'm on the Penny's Pedal Pets, Arizona Fish Rescue, based out of Kingman, Arizona. And today we're just doing a quick little segment with my uh, with some friendly angel fish to the side here. But that's not the main focus of the video today. Maybe there's this tank. It's this tank. And right now it just looks like an empty fish tank with a couple of air lines dipped into it with some, uh, some air stones on the bottom. These have a reason. These have a purpose that are very essential to the stability of shrimp tanks and breeding neocardina shrimp, or really any shrimp, um, and for like long term success in breeding. And that is with um, pre-treated water. So the way I like to do it, and the way me and Matt do it, is we pre-treat the water for a day beforehand. And we have this tank up here, which is on the top row of the fish tank. We're up high today. The roof is right here. And this is on the shelf above our shrimp tanks. It's right here in the middle, above all of them. And so one of the main things that give people problems when it comes to their neocardian shrimp breeding and just having a little bit of trouble with it is them doing too big of water changes with too large a water chemistry and it having ill effects on the parent shrimp. And what that means is either when you just run water straight from your tap to your shrimp tank, so you do 50% water change, even 20% water change, and you run water straight from your tap to a shrimp tank that has not had a water change for a week, a month, or a couple weeks, or anything like that, it's going to shift the water chemistry sort of fast and the shrimp especially in the the shrimp I've seen, their response to sudden water changes is to molt for some reason. I'm not exactly sure the science why, but they molt. And what that does is, if you have a shrimp molt too often, an adult shrimp I've noticed should only molt about once a month. And if you induce a molt once a week or once every two weeks, you get a thing called failed molts, which is also associated to be the ring of death on the Ocardina shrimp, where it's, it looks like a shrimp with a ring around its midsection and it's dead, and people call that the ring of death. And what I've noticed had to be found is from an inability to molt correctly. So when a shrimp is ready to molt, they start to secrete an oil between the layer of their new exoskeleton and the one they're about to ship. And if you induce a molt too often, they don't have the availability or the time to do it correctly. They don't have the time to do it um, at their own rate, at their own pace, and it can kill them, or it can cause um, injury. And that's just that's that's, that's not going to promote breeding. So when you want to breed shrimp, you want to keep as consistent the water chemistry as you possibly can. And that sort of sounds like it's not doing water changes, but that is it, it's more so just adding water at a very slow pace that is as close to the water in the tank already. It is as close to the same water chemistry and water parameters that is in the tank already. And the way we do that is we already have a pre-filled basin of water, which I'm going to fill this on camera for you. And what you're going to do is you're going to have a pre-filled basin of water and shrimp don't respond well to chlorine or chloramines in the water. They're a very sensitive um, microorganism and when you just throw water in straight from the tap or straight from anywhere, one, the TDS is going to be different than the tank most likely and two, there's going to be a slight trace of chloramines or, or chlorine in your tap water if your um, local municipal tap water treats with that. And even if it's a small amount, the shrimp will be sensitive to it. And so what I like to do to just kind of X out all that potential possibility and all that potential um, ill effect from that is I like to pre-treat water. And all we're going to do is we're going to fill this tank with water and we're going to let it sit with no lid and it's going to be exposed to um, the atmospheric oxygen and air around it. And what that does is it's going to slowly evaporate over the next day. It's going to evaporate out all the chlorine and chloramines in the water. And we're still going to treat with prime anyway, just because it can't hurt anything, it couldn't help. So we're going to treat with some prime when we first fill it up, and it's going to sit exposed to the oxygen for 18, 24, 36 hours. Really, I like the minimum to be 24, but you can do 18. I just like to, again, close off as much potential for anything bad happening. So. We're going to fill this tank up, it's going to sit here, just, un just not doing anything, maybe with a slight bubbler to um, just to have some surface agitation to get that chlorine and chloramine evaporated out faster. 
and then the next day, tomorrow, or whenever he decides to use this water, it's going to be clean, pre-treated, and another thing it's going to do is it's hot here in Arizona right now, so the, so the tap water that comes out is hot. And I, I, like lately, whatever time of day I like to use water right now, it's coming out at anywhere between 82 and 90 degrees. It's hot. And these tanks are unheated, but the room is, is it sits at a pretty nice warm temperature. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm warm right now. And so I'd say these are probably around like six or between like 76 to 78 degrees. Maybe 79, pushing 80, and so we don't run heaters on these things right here. But still, if we throw some water just directly straight out of the tap, it's coming at it's coming at 86, 90 degrees. It's going to boost these, this temperature up, which the shrimp can not respond to that very well. Even if it doesn't kill them, it can cause them to molt sooner than we like, or it can cause them to get sick it can cause them to it can just cause stress we don't want to cause stress in our shrimp what we want is just a straight line as peaceful nature of their lives as we possibly get so that we can have them producing eggs in their ovaries and which can eventually be fertilized and you know they, be, they, they can become very shrimp before they belong to shrimp you know on their undercarriage and so that's what we're gonna do we're just gonna fill this tank up treat it with some fun and i thought we'd just give you guys a little segment on 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 that um, why we use pre-treated water instead of doing regular water changes like how we use for fish. Because fish can handle a lot more, fish are a lot more hardy. I also use this process for my fish, for my fish fry, I should say. My regular fish, I just do water changes. It's just with a python straight from the tap. But my but my fish fry, I think of them to be the same sensitivity of the unit. That not, I think about it, it's just that I can have higher survival rates. And they can have more success and raise more fries if we don't hold or just selling size in general. And so I like to do this method where it's um, water changing and pre-treated water. So um, when it comes to so the shrimp water change for us looks like you drain the tank 50% or 20% or whatever. And we just refill it back up with this water that has been sitting. All the chlorine and chloramine has evaporated out where it has also sat in the same room basically right next or right above the shrimp tank so that way the water that's going in there is the same temperature so they don't have any temperature fluctuation um so that way the only thing that can be a little bit different is tds and with that and what these airlines are for what these airlines are for and these flow valves on top is to create a very slow drip. You don't want to just drain it straight down because that's kind of defeating the purpose of what this whole setup is. And so you turn this to do, I think Matt likes to do one drip per second. I like three to five because it's still a very, very slow drip of water. And so, so water is going to siphon out just like how you do regular siphon water changes with the tube. So this is a very thin tube and it's dipped in the tank. And this flow valve right here is going to limit how much water can actually fall through this hose. And you're just going to be a very slow drip of water, whether it be one drip per second, five drip per second. I, some, I see some people do ten. Just a very, very slow drip of water, so that way any shifts that come from doing a water change in the water chemistry within the shrimp tank is very slow and minimal to give them the smoothest possible transition of from their tank water currently to the little bit of parameter change that's going to come from doing a water change, if any at all. And if you don't have any parameter change, if your TDS stays the same, if your pH stays the same, if anything stays the same, cool. You're banging the right spot on. Especially if you're super hard breeding, you're doing you're doing something right. But if there are some parameter fluctuations that come from doing water changes, this is a way to limit the ill effects from those. So um, I'm just gonna start filling this up. So one cap full is going to do about to treat about 50 gallons of water. This is a 10 gallon tank. So all we're going to do is about a fifth or a quarter of a cap full. So like that just a little bit. So the temperature of the water that's going in the tank doesn't matter right now because over time it's going to um, cool down to because it's going to be hot because no matter what temperature you have our tap water on here in Arizona right now in the summer, it's going to be hot. So we're just going to let this cool down and just level up to the same temperature as these shrimp tanks and a change will most likely be done tomorrow or a little bit later this week and that's pretty much all there is to it 
Alright, after this is full, I'll show you guys what a slow drip looks like. Let's do a little sample one. Alright, and so I'm gonna move this camera a little bit for you guys. Actually, let's move this back some. Let me just know. Okay, so now we're down here. We're just right here in front of this blue dream shrimp tank. And this is a hose that's connected up here. And we're just going to do a sample test. We're not going to do a full water chain. Um, we're just going to show you what it looks like. So, right now, this is a hose that's leading up to this tank with a fluid valve on it. This fluid valve right here. And this hose has an inner stone right here just to leave to stop um, other particulate matter that's in the tank from coming in. Uh, any snails. Uh, from getting stuck in the hose or um, just to also slow water flow. I'm just going to do a little, just bring a little bit of water through. Actually, don't know this fluid valve is open. Right. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that is a drip coming from the hose. And if we turn this valve, you guys may or may not be able to see it. If you guys turn this valve up here, um, and uh, if you turn it open, if you open it some more, there'll be more water dripping out. You can see that's more that's more drips per second than before. And if we close this valve some, it's going to limit the amount of water that can come out of it. So, just like this. If you close the valve, yeah, so if you close the valve, just like that, you can see now it has cooled out, it has chilled out to maybe two, three drips per second. So, that's pretty much it. And so all this water that's going in here, even if this is much different, um, a different water chemistry than the tank that's in here right now, um, and we're putting, we're obviously like changing water right now. We, it's good. It's just gonna start um, dripping in. And I'm sorry, I'm not very good at talking, but I think you guys get the point. This is going to very slowly put water. In. And some of these lines are still open, so we should probably close them. So that way we're not overfilling tanks. Um, but yeah, that's it. Um, we're just going to turn this valve off too, because we're not doing a water change right now. I'm just showing you guys um, what preparing the water for a shrimp change water, for a shrimp water change looks like. We're just going to leave this in the tank. There's no water draining into it. And we just do this so that way it, um, so that way it's already in there. And that's about it. Just preparing shrimp water for an eventual water change, um, just to help you guys start to breed some shrimp. That was the thing that changed. That was the thing that helped me breed shrimp um, uh, really well, and, and it, it helped me incredibly. Because I was doing regular water changes, and I just wasn't. I was still breeding shrimp, but it was not as many. With this, it um, it really changed the name of the game when it came to breeding shrimp. I was able to breed thousands of shrimp in a 10 gallon tank just doing these regular water changes and I could also do as many water changes as I want because a um, water change didn't have to equal um, failed molts or huge shifts in water chemistry you can change water 24 hours a day with the system if you want and your shrimp will still breed incredibly I've seen people have their system um, with an overflow on it and it just has water constantly dripping just at a slow rate and yeah that's 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 it it's really nothing um, really nothing intense it's just a little bit extra tidbit it really changed the name of the game with my shrimp breeding and mats, and we figured we'd just share it with you guys. Alright, and I'm Armando here with Pelham Pinnacle Pets, Arizona Fish Rescue, based out of Kingman, Arizona, and this is how we prepare our shrimp water for shrimp water changes. Thank you guys for watching this one. Um, thanks for hanging along. Uh, it's just me with this one, and I'm um, sorry if the video quality and the actual production quality isn't that great. Um, but I'm trying, and um, I figured I'd just share it with you guys. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Matt. I'm Armando. And we're Pendley's Plentiful Pets. Arizona Fish Rescue, Minnesota Kingman, Arizona. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, maybe throw a share out there. It'd be much appreciated. Every little bit goes back towards these fishies. We do have a cash app at Save the Fishies or a Zelly at 928-263-9626. Thank you so much for watching.